Hello YouTube, it's Supernova, back with more Falcon 4 BMS. Today we're looking at the ACM radar mode and the AIM-9 Sidewinder missile. Verify that the FCR is operating by checking that the radio frequency or RF switch on the miscellaneous panel is set to normal. Check that master arm is set to arm. Select air to air master mode. Air combat mode or ACM is used to cue or point weapons. While the beyond visual range or BVR modes can also be used to find targets, in most cases ACM is used to engage targets you can already see. We used combined radar mode or CRM for the RWS and TWIS BVR submodes. To select ACM mode press option select button or OSB1 then press OSB19. ACM has four submodes, Boresight, Vertical Scan, Slewable and Hood Scan. They are identified as Bow, 60, Slew and 20 respectively. The maximum range all ACM submodes will acquire a target is within 10 nautical miles. A target designator or TD box indicates the position of the target. If the target is outside the hood with the radar locked onto it, a locator line points in the direction of the target. To select Boresight submode, cycle the submodes with OSB2 or press Target Management Switch or TMS Up. Boresight uses a tight scan pattern emitting 3 degrees below the gun cross and is therefore very precise. In both sight submode a cross is displayed on the hood which represents the radar beam pointing straight out of the nose of the aircraft. Vertical scan submode has a 10 degree azimuth sweep and a 60 degree vertical sweep. A vertical line appears on the hood to indicate vertical scan submode has been selected. The vertical sweep starts 10 degrees below the gun cross and extends 50 degrees above it. This mode is useful when tracking a target along your lift vector, which is a vector line extending vertically up out of your cockpit. As you pull the aircraft's nose onto a target you can lock it up before it appears on the hood and can therefore fire a missile at a target even if you don't have sufficient energy to point the aircraft's nose at it. Slowable submode is different from the other ACM submodes as it is the only ACM submode that is normally used when you do not see a target. The pattern extends 20 degrees in azimuth and 60 degrees vertically. A cross appears on the hood to indicate that slowable submode is selected and a circle represents the centre of the scan pattern. The pattern is slewed with the radar cursor keys which are the shifted arrow keys by default. Slewable submode is most often used to scan airspace you are about to enter to quickly sweep for possible targets. For example when exiting a target area you might slew the scan pattern from level to high and then from left to right each time allowing the radar time to complete the sweep. Slewable submode can also be used to detect a target quickly when your radar warning receiver indicates the target is nearby and within 60 degrees azimuth of the nose of the aircraft. HUD scan is the least useful of all the ACM submodes. It uses a 30 by 20 degree field of view which corresponds to the area covered by the hood. Unlike the Boresight submode where the radar beam, sweeping straight out, locks onto a target detected within 10 nautical miles, HUD scan instead sweeps its 30 by 20 degree field of view, which takes longer to complete. HUD scan is the default ACM submode and begins in standby mode. 
No rad or no radar is displayed at the top of the hood to indicate that the radar is not emitting. Therefore neither the TD box or the DLZ will appear on the hood until it is made active. HUD scan is made active by pressing TMS right. The AIM-9 Sidewinder is a short-range air-to-air missile and uses infrared homing for guidance. It equips most Western Air Forces and through the K-13 version many former Soviet Aligned Forces. The AIM-9 first entered service in 1956. Three AIM-9 models are included in Falcon 4 BMS. The rear aspect Papa, the all aspect Mike and the latest version of the missile, the X-Ray. The AIM-9 missile tracks heat from the target's engine, but while the PAPA's weapon engagement zone, or WEZ, is restricted to within 40 degrees of the rear of the target, the Mike and X-ray can be used from all aspects, in other words from any angle. Though zero aspect, in other words directly behind the target, is the ideal firing position for the PAPA and Mike. The missile will track a target once it has been uncaged. Until the late 1970s, AIM-9s would only uncage after being fired, which meant that a pilot would not know if the missile would track until the missile was off the rail. The PAPA, Mike and X-ray versions can be uncaged before firing. The position of the seek head is fed into the hood as a diamond. A small diamond indicates that the seek head is caged and the aircraft is telling the seeker where to look, while a larger diamond indicates that the seek head is uncaged and is likely tracking the target. The missile diamond is the primary cue to indicate the state of missile tracking. The dynamic launch zone, or DLZ, appears to the right of the hood when there is a radar lock on the target. The DLZ provides kinematic information on the probability of the missile reaching the target, not whether it will guide onto the target. A shot taken between Armax 1 and Armin 1 can in theory reach the target. However, a shot taken between Armax 2 and Armin 2 has a higher probability of hitting a manoeuvring target. A radar lock is not required to fire the AIM-9 as range can be estimated, but without a radar lock the aircraft must be pointed towards the target. The missile tracks the heat tone the target generates. The heat tone is an audio signal which is fed into the pilot's headset. The tone provides feedback on the quality of the missile track. A constant tone indicates a higher quality track. In this tutorial we will be using the mic. Spot and scan options are available at OSB3. Spot is the default mode, while scan provides a larger seeker field of view. As this option doesn't appear to be correctly modelled at this time, we will use the default. There are two options available at OSB19, slave and boresight. In slave mode the missile seeker is fixed to the centre of the hood until missile lock. In boresight mode the seeker head is either fixed at the centre of the hood or it follows the helmet mounted queuing system or HMCS. The two options available at OSB18 are bypass or BP and target designator or TD. When using bypass the seeker head is manually uncaged while the TD option will automatically uncage the seeker head when it detects a heat source. For this tutorial we will use the default settings slave and bypass. Cooling the missile seek head increases its sensitivity and must be done before use. The Papa and Mike versions use argon gas to cool the seek head, while the X-ray is electrically cooled. Note that the supply of argon will run out after between 60 and 90 minutes of use. To begin cooling the seek heads of all the AIM-9 missiles on the aircraft, press OSB-8. Note that READY has now appeared at OSB6. Increase the volume of the missile knob on the AUDIO-1 panel as desired. This controls the Sidewinder missile acquisition sound level. We will use the BOSIGHT submode for this example. When BOSIGHT detects a target within 10 miles it automatically designates it using single target track or STT mode. STT tracks the designated target continuously and provides an accurate lock. However, the target will probably become aware of the lock through its radar warning receiver. As the missile is still caged, there is a small missile diamond inside the TD box. To the right of the hood is the DLZ range. The DLZ range changes as range to the target decreases or increases. 
The closure rate is to the left of the DLZ carrot. Current estimated missile flight time is shown below the DLZ. The slant range, which is the line of sight distance to the target, is shown below that in nautical miles. 6SRM indicates that six short-range missiles are available. Target aspect is displayed on the missile reticle. Target aspect angle is defined as the angle between the target's velocity vector, in other words its flight path, and the line of sight between the shooter and the target. This is particularly important when using a rear aspect missile. When you have good tone, uncage the missile by pressing the manual range uncage switch, which is U by default. Note that the missile diamond has expanded. Listen for a solid heat tone. When the DLZ carrot has reached RMAX 2, and with a good heat tone, press the weapon release button to fire the missile, and be prepared to shoot again if the missile fails to guide. Call FOX2 to indicate a sidewinder is in the air. Note that the estimated flight time of the missile in the air has now appeared below the current estimated flight time. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on air combat mode and the AIM-9 Sidewinder missile. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you again for the next Falcon 4 BMS video.